Ah, here's a game. Nikos Stratilos from Greece. Nice. Okay, well, let's play e4, e5. I haven't had, haven't had a little. Let's see what he does. Oh, he's surprised by e5. Huh? He doesn't have a plan. It's like the most popular move at the top level these days. Everybody plays the Berlin defense or something. Something like it, but uh, I will go for the traditional Rui Lopez. I won't play the Berlin. Or if he goes this way, then I will go for the uh, Italian game. With bishop to c5. Okay, I'll develop my pieces. He leaves this pawn hanging for the moment. Okay, just have to be careful. He's got um, knight here at, at some point, but well, I can castle now. Also has pawn moves that attack my pieces, but I think um, it's logical to defend the center at this point. And castle. And then, um, <clears throat> so he can push in the center. I can um, counter on the flank here a little bit. Um, play with um, h or a a6 or a5 a5 you know slows down his idea of playing b4 and also provides a square for the bishop to retreat to if it gets harassed if he pushes d4 which is kind of what he's building up to what do i do i can take he takes and then i have to retreat and it leaves him with a big center okay he did play that yeah it's a logical follow-on so I take, he takes, and it's defended by the knight and the, uh, the queen, and I'm attacking it with the bishop and the knight. So it's adequately defended. This is defended. If I retreat, he takes, I'll take with a knight. Knight takes pawn. To, it's, it's okay. He can trade queens, but um, I'm holding on to this pawn, right? Because his e-pawn is still there, yeah. So let's just uh, drop back. I mean, that was one of the ideas, was to allow this bishop to retreat. And see how he wants to deal with the center. He can close the center by playing d5. He can trade. Trading shouldn't lead to a whole lot. And I can develop my light squared bishop out here. I still have to get that piece into the game. Yeah, so he closes the center. So um, the knight, I think, should go over to g6. I think that's better than, I mean, you know, possibly it could go back to b8 and come out to a6 or b8 to d7, but then it's running into these other pieces. So it looks like, you know, a square on g6 is reasonable. Oh, there's no hurry to do that, is there? If he plays his bishop out here, I can still play knight g6. Yeah. Let's bring my bishop out first. If he comes out to pin my knight. Oh, he doesn't. He just defends it. Okay. So I've got uh, potential pressure on f2. Bishop uh, and knight coordinating there. Let's first play knight g6. I'm thinking, you know, bishop takes, knight takes is what his idea is. And then I could play knight to um, <clears throat> knight to g5. Okay, he's not. He's going to take with the queen. Still. Okay. If I do queen to d7. Bishop takes, queen takes, then knight to g4 here. Hits, hits that pawn, which is actually uh, only defended by the queen and the king. <laughs> and if he defends with the bishop, yeah, I can trade off the bishop there. So, let's try that. Bishop takes, queen takes, seems like a logical response. Then knight to g4. Can't take the knight because I played queen d7 to defend it. Um, yeah, I think that's a good move. I think it's a plan. So he either has to give up the dark squared bishop. Of course, I gave up the light squared bishop, but um, the thing is the bishop he's left with is going to be a bad piece, it looks like. Mm, well, he's got bishop to b5 to activate it. Maybe it's not that bad. 
Oh, he defends with the rook. Okay, I didn't think of that. It's true, he can do that. Um, but I can play with knight to um, knight to f4. That was the advantage, I guess, of bringing the knight to g6 before starting on this adventure. You know, helps to sometimes get your pieces in place before uh, before launching on an adventure. Oops, <laughs> why why didn't I see that? Hmm. Yeah, I really didn't see that. Funny. Is there any way? Well, I have to take. I have to take. So is there anything good here that I've got? I've got rook to... Well, it's not much, but I, I should play it. <coughs> rook to e8. And maybe rook to e5. double rooks but he can double rooks too so it goes both ways although if he doubles rooks um, okay now he plays the bishop there that makes sense trying to take advantage of the lineup of my queen and rook there also it's a way of protecting his pawn although that pawn was not really loose after he doubled rooks because my queen was needed to defend my knight as well So what's this? Can I push again? He could um, take or he could pin. Yeah, I think I need to just just drop back. The, uh, the exchange here isn't so great. If I push the pawn and he takes it, gives him this um, b5 square again for his bishop. Okay, I can blockade there. Queen b7, looking at b2. <coughs> b2 is defended by the rook. Okay, so he brings in the knight. I want to uh, chase that knight away. He can play check over here. Hmm. That's good. I have knight over here to hit his queen, but his queen can go to this file and threaten mate. After the check, he's attacking my knight too. But so, knight um, h6 check, king up defends the knight. And now maybe I'm threatening g g5 actually hits the queen and attacks his knight in a way um, but if his queen just drops back or comes forward as long as it stays in a position putting pressure on my knight <laughs> then i can't i'm not really threatening to take his knight still g5 might be interesting then then maybe i could move my knight somewhere Or maybe if I move my knight first, what? how would this work? Knight h4, see, I'm hitting his queen, and he can't take here. So his queen moves. And if the queen stays on this diagonal, then g5, knight h5, and then g5. Maybe that's a way to try and win that knight over there. So we'll start with knight h5. Queen can go to e3, d2, 
C1. Or he could... No, he can't counterattack my knight just yet. After the queen moves and I play G5, then he could play G4 hitting the knight. I take his knight, he takes my knight. That would be a messy situation. Okay, Nikos Stratilos, where is your queen going? Or do you have another idea? Oh, we can't go to e3 because of the bishop. Yeah, so uh, he has to go to d2. He's putting pressure on this pawn. So if I play g5 and he plays g4, do I have anything clever? Hmm, he could also just play knight back to g4 as well. Yeah, hitting my rook. Oh, that's not bad. So, is this getting me into trouble again? <laughs> hmm, <laughs> yeah, my, my uh, rook is hanging. That is trouble. What a messy position. <laughs> I have knight to uh, f. Knight to f4 as well, hitting his rook. Drops back. So let's play. Let's play knight f4 because otherwise, that you know, having that rook needing needing the rook to defend that pawn is kind of annoying. Check. Okay. Can I block here? I think I can. And this queen. Uh, my rook is defended by the bishop and the pawn, so I can move. I can move this rook with tempo now. Rook here hitting his uh, bishop and hitting his queen. Well, I'll bet this will be one of those games where the computer the computer will laugh at us both. <laughs> it's uh, it's gotten to the point where it's just too complicated for uh, normal mortals. Yeah, so hasn't he just walked into a big problem here? So if I go rook to b5, the queen is under attack. Queen takes bishop, queen takes, pawn takes rook. So he gets two, a rook and a bishop for the queen. But um, is there a better threat? Rook here hits the queen twice. Again, he can take the bishop and take the rook. Rook there. Queen takes. Yeah, I have to avoid moves where the queen can just take something. Okay, I'm down to 33 seconds, so let's try and finish this off without running out of time. Okay, took that way. Yeah, so he got a pawn for it as well. And uh, and his bishop there. So let's um, attack the bishop. I guess I'm not really attacking it, am I? Now activate my rook. Put pressure on the bishop. Maybe that's the better way to say it. One, two, three, four. So he moves the bishop. Two, three, four, five pawns. One, two, three, four, five, six pawns. Okay. So I was down a pawn to start with, so I must have gained a pawn somewhere along the way. 
because <laughs> then because he gained a pawn too. Okay, so he wants to take here. Ah, his bishop is hanging. Didn't see that. Yeah, I can just take the bishop. That's uh, that is the problem with these uh, fast time controls. I don't notice everything that's going on. Okay, so I'm just a queen for a rook up. And I don't believe he can do much about it. Even with 37 seconds, I should be able to win this one. <laughs> My last game, I got into an uh, end game where I was two pawns up, and then I lost because I was moving too quickly and I turned my two pawns up rook and pawn endgame into a losing endgame where I was down a pawn. Ah, it's just tough for me to move that fast. Okay, he resigned there. Okay, good game. I will upload this and see you guys later. Bye.